Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin and joining me live in studio, Assistant Town Manager Mark Ells. Mark, good morning. Morning, Sarah. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm great. Did you get out and enjoy the beautiful weather this weekend? All weekend. Yeah. It was All weekend. Good weekend for being outside. Um, so wanted to, let's start with uh, an event that happened last week at the One Cape Conference, which was held in Hyannis. And of course, uh, the, the kind of, the underlying theme of One Cape is really uh, the, the 208 plan, the water, uh, water resources here. So tell me a little bit about the conference and then a panel that, that you participated on. Well, it's an opportunity where under our, our regional um, planning group, the, the, the Cape Cod Commission, they bring together um, federal, state, private, public, um, agencies and groups to discuss our water resources. Certainly, you know, one of the major issues in the forefront right now is, is the 208 work um, that the Cape Cod Commission has been coordinating and each of the communities are, are preparing documents, they're calling them a bookend document, meaning showing traditional and non-traditional approaches to address primarily nutrient loading concerns um, that we see in our, in our coastal waters. So, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a great conference. It was well attended. Uh, I had the opportunity to participate on a panel um, discussing watershed permitting, okay. which is a, a whole new opportunity to bring communities together and to talk about the shared watersheds we have, but not just to talk, to, to go into a formal relationship with other communities as to how we're going to manage the issues in that watershed focused on nutrient loading. Sure, and those watersheds, uh, as we know, you know, don't follow town lines. Uh, we share watersheds with no, uh, with no. Yarmouth, and, and, and is, it, is it just Yarmouth that well, we, we have, have shared five major, with? We have five major, you know, coastal embayments in town, and uh, we have the, we, we're, we're about 15% of the shoestring Pomponesset Bay watershed, and then there's the three bays. Yep. Uh, which we share again with Sandwich and Mashpee the same way we do with Pompanessa Chewstring Bay. Then you have uh, Centerville River East Bay, which is all us. You have Barnstable Harbor on the north side that we share with Sandwich. And then you have Lewis Bay, which we share with Yarmouth. And there's a couple of other small embayments tucked in there um, in between, but, but those are the five primary. So this is something that the, the, the DEP and the EPA are looking for communities on the Cape to come together in their watersheds, establish what the loads are, the nutrient loads are to these embayments. It's a 20-year permit reviewed in five-year increments. And what it will allow us to do is to talk about where we are in our planning, where we are in our implementation, and how we might share logically some of the, the objectives that we establish. Primarily, uh, reduce nutrient loading. And the way they're going to, you know, they've modeled it to date, and they've sampled, and they have a good indication of what the loads are. And now, um, as we implement solutions, whether it be uh, you know, people are putting uh, aquaculture out there, oysters and, and, and other uh, shellfish. Uh, that might help to reduce some of it. Um, they may look at some other innovative technologies. Some may be going out and putting in wastewater treatment. So then you begin to look at what the modeled impact of that is. And then you begin to measure it over time. And then you either meet the objectives you had hoped to, you exceed them, or you fall short. And so what we will have to collectively do is look at, okay, how did we apportion out these loads? Are we reducing them to meet those objectives that we established? And then modify based on whether you meet them, you don't meet them, or you exceed them. And you do that with the other communities over a 20-year period with the hope that when you get to the end of that 20-year period, the watersheds in, in, um, meets the objective over that period and is in a lot better condition. Sure. So it really is about implementing solutions and, and finding the effectiveness of those solutions. Absolutely. And I, I, uh, you know, from the discussions that were had at this meeting, uh, this isn't a, okay, we might participate in this. The state is looking for us 
us as Cape Cod and certainly us as Barnstable, um, who's responsible for part or, or an entire you know, set of watersheds, uh, to have this in place. I'm guessing certainly, I think uh, it, would be, it would be a very positive thing to have it happen in the calendar year or the next 12 months. The time frame wasn't clear from the discussion. Uh, but this is a complicated issue. Mm. These have never been done in this state before. I'm not sure what states they may have been done in. Uh, so certainly this broadens very quickly to a discussion with the regulators and um, a, a realistic time frame. The pump and Eschert shoestring will be the first one. This is the model. This is the pilot. And Barnstable Sandwich and Mashpee have stepped up. Um, we, you know, certainly Barnstable's always been a, a leader when there's been opportunity um, to, to keep control of our own future. And this is an opportunity to do this. I, uh, you know, I would be uncomfortable having someone else do this and then hand it to me and say, here, this is, the, you know, this is what you're going to do. Primarily because I don't know if it will make sense for us. At least in this discussion, we can... You know, we can talk about realistic time frames, we can talk about allocation of load, we can talk about the, the, the sentinel station that they have where they're going to do the primary sampling to see if we meet our objectives and, and you know, how, how will that work and, and even talk further into the intermunicipal agreement between communities as to how we're going to deal with this if it does work, if it's on target or if it doesn't work. Otherwise, you let somebody else do it, and we're going to live with whatever they come up with. That's right. I, I, absolutely. So. so funding for this, um, is that still up in the air, or is there funding coming from which, the state, Which portion? The uh, no, I, I, don't see, I don't see anybody stepping up saying, um, you know, we have, we have money to, to implement your solution. Certainly this planning monies. Um, the Cape Cod Commission has been successful, you know, through their work on the 208. Uh, and I'm sure beyond uh, to in, in getting planning monies. Uh, typically the way monies come in now to us is there is a um, state revolving fund for clean water uh, and um, drink public water supply. And so, you know, you can either get it for a wastewater project or, or a drinking water project. Um, there are some other areas that they'll, they'll award them as well. And then uh, because, because we are categorized as an environmental justice community, um, which actually they changed the term this year and it's, it's some other name now, but historically we are eligible for a principal subsidy, which means if you borrow a million dollars, they will give three to six percent okay. principal subsidy, except in years where there's greater federal subsidies available, like if you remember in 2009, remember when the ARA funds came through? Yep. This is how they distributed those. Okay. Um, so, so they would put even a greater principal subsidy in. Uh, and so that opportunity is there. So we try to work with our, our state and our, and our federal government to see as much monies come in as possible through that mechanism. Beyond that, it, it's very unclear where monies may come from. Great. Um, Mark, let's talk a little bit about the uh, South Coast bike route, of course, um, you know, yeah. as a cyclist who rides on the road um, very much uh, all, all across Cape Cod. I think safety and signage and marking is so very important um, for bicyclists to be aware as well as motorists. And I know this was um, the kind of impetus behind creating the South Coast Bikeway was to take a very a road with it's very popular with cyclists and just make everyone aware um, that 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 it it is being used by bicyclists. So where are we in terms of putting that signage up or if, if we are two steps to that back. Point? Okay. It's not it, it it hasn't been eliminated, but what what I observed happen was um, a lack of communication to each of the villages and then collectively with within Barnstable. And not quite sure why that happened that way. I know that the, the bike groups, and I know that our staff went out there to talk to citizens. But when this came forward, people were scratching, are they, are they building a physical bike path? Um, you know, how many signs are there? Are they going to widen the roads? There were lots and lots of questions after this was brought forward as what was described as a, a final, a right. final um, design. We hadn't gone in the field yet to implement. And so we're going to step back. We're going to go back out to each of the villages, 
with what we have. They've already, they being our staff, has already received comment. And we're going to take that under advisement, modify if appropriate, go back out to each of the villages and um, try to collect input from each of the villages, then bring it back to the table, look at it, make sure it makes sense, you know, from, from a, from a uh, more comprehensive viewpoint, and then bring it back uh, to the community, make sure everybody's good, and that will be the version that we will actually go forward with. To date, we haven't spent, the money's really for signs and lines and things of that nature. We haven't spent that money. All of our time has been in planning and, and laying out how this might occur. Sure. So there's, there'll be lots of opportunity for input. Uh, if it's still unclear after we do this, then we may go back out and you know try to get some more input. But sure. I think you're right. I, I'm a biker as well, and um, you know my children bike on on the same roads that we're talking about. We want to make sure it's safe. We want to make sure it's appropriate. Uh, we don't want to create sign clutter, but on the other hand, we want to let people know um, that, that you know that, that, that there's bicycles and there's uh, cars and there's pedestrians as well. I mean, a lot of my questions were around sidewalks and bicycles and, you know, how the sidewalk and bicycle, sure. meaning people walking, uh, it happens in my front, you know, front yard every day on Craigville Beach Road, bicycles on the sidewalks. Yep. And that can be very dangerous yes. as well. Absolutely. So, uh, and we wanted, then we want to get a message out to our community as to what it is we're doing and um, probably need a little bit of uh, education and promotion about you know, how you want to ride, where you want to ride, uh, and, and um, go forward from there. So Great. Well, I look forward to that. So probably not this summer. Maybe we'll see uh, some, some movement on that for next biking season. Or could be the, f I suppose it could be the fall if all goes well. Great. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not really... I, I'm not looking for a definitive timeline. I'm more looking that everybody understands it. We have a consensus that this is appropriate, um, and that's what we go forward with. Wonderful. Well, Mark, thank you so much uh, for coming well, down and for joining us. Me. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yes. Thanks, and we'll have a different name for you next week, or two weeks, actually, because we are title, we are off different title. Different title. I'm not going to change my name. <laughs> no, a different title for you uh, in a couple of weeks. So Mark Ells, our assistant town manager. We're going to head out to uh, find out if those fish are biting Captain Gary Brown.